Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. So in this video, I'm going to show you this new storage system that I've installed under the layout. Um, each of these units is about 40 inches high and you can get them in a couple of different kind of sizes and variations. These ones are the 10 drawer unit um, that are about, like I said, 40 inches or so high. I believe they sell them in four, five, seven, and even I think maybe six and, and eight uh, drawers as well. So you can get them in various different heights and various different drawer sizes as well. But um, this particular one works out pretty well. Um, I got it on Amazon and each unit was about $60 or so. Um, I was able to find uh, one of the units on the end, I think only cost me 50. And the reason for that was it's kind of got this frosted rather than the uh, transparent um, drawers on it. And I think it wasn't available by Prime. I think it took like an extra week or something to get here. Uh, but anyway, I thought I'd uh, show you guys because a couple of folks have asked me about this since I've been working on it uh, for the last couple of weeks. And uh, you can see here I've got uh, some labels. And these are all my Mach 1 coaches. Um, these are all my Mach 2 coaches, some Mach 2, Mach 3, and, and so on. Um, now, if you're short for time and you just want kind of a quick look at this, um, basically, uh, you can get about five or six um, coaches into a drawer here. So you can see here I've got some of my maroon uh, BR Mark 1, some Hornby. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a little bit of a gap in there. They do move around a little bit, and there's not enough real room for them to move back and forth to damage them. Uh, obviously, if you're rough with it, you might break a coupling or something like that, but... Um, in general, it, it works really well as long as you're careful with it. Uh, you can see here, here are my uh, southern uh, Mach 1s from Bachman. Um, there's a bit of a gap, so there's a possibility you could put some foam or something in there if you wanted to do that. And one thing I like about these drawers too is they don't come out. Um, so you can see there, it won't, won't come out, so it's not going to tip over uh, and fall on the floor. Um, I've actually mounted it close enough uh, to the top of the baseboard so if it actually tips. Um, it's not going to tip anything out. It's just only going to uh, hit the top of the baseboard and stay there. So uh, you could, of course, secure it to the ground as well if you wanted to. They do come with wheels, um, but I opted not to put the wheels on it. Um, I live in the woods here and uh, the layout's in the basement. And so I think raising the stuff a couple of inches up off the ground and would just give uh, mice an opportunity to get underneath a nest. So I uh, decided to just leave it this way. Uh, you can see here... There is a bit of room and uh, with the smaller coaches. So these are Mach 2 coaches from Bachman and uh, they do move a little bit around in there, but as long as you don't open them too fast, uh, you can see there, it uh, it works pretty well. So um, the uh, kind of bottom line is, these run about uh, $60 or so, $65 or so and from Amazon. You might be able to find something similar from um, on Ikea if you looked hard enough. Uh, you can get them in the UK. I'll stick a link in the um, Amazon uh, link down below in the description. Um, but yeah, so that's it. I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at it. And uh, if you want to stay on and watch the rest of the video, I'm actually going to show you the process I use for adding some coaches uh, to the uh, kind of collection here and uh, what I do to make sure that they're okay when I unbox them and so on and how do I Kind of catalog them and, and, and so on so if you're interested in that uh, stay tuned if you want to see a little bit more of the drawers and the local or the rolling stock in it and uh, stay tuned as well so i'm going to go move the camera and give you guys a better shot of it okay so just want to show you um a little bit of a closer look here so this is actually uh, my collection of um mach 2 uh two f uh, scott rail uh coaches and uh, this is the uh, newer uh, scott rail livery and you can see I have a whole rig uh, that fit in there. Uh, oh, now recently, um, I got some DRS coaches as well as some additional um, Scott Rail Mach 2Fs. So I'm gonna actually show you um, the process I'm gonna use to catalog them and then uh, stick them here into this drawer. And if you're interested in seeing some other stuff, um, here are some Bachman uh, Mach 2Fs. Uh, these are the ones with the lights uh, that work out pretty well. And you can see they work uh, really nicely uh, in the drawer here and um, they'll stay dust free and uh, reasonably good. Oh, there's another thing I was going to show you as um, there's enough little pockets here on the side uh, so you can actually uh, put the parts for the uh, coaches and stuff in there if you don't want to put them on the coach that way you at least know that they uh, still go with this particular uh, set of coaches. Uh, let me go show you the uh, Mark 1 and the uh, Mark 2 coaches as well. And I can also show you, uh, I've got a set of HSTs uh, sitting in here as well. 
All right, so uh, you can see here, I've got some uh, Mach 1. These are corridor coaches and uh, BR blue and gray. And if I open them up here, you can see, um, you know, I've got six in here, uh, two, three, four, five, six. And it works out really well. And um, they're gonna stay um, pretty, pretty dust free sitting in here rather than sitting out on the layout. And um, when I want to just grab them, I know exactly where they are. I can easily throw together a rake uh, for whatever I'm filming and so on. And so it makes things a lot easier and a lot faster. And when I'm done with them, I can just roll them off and uh, stick them back here in the container. All right, so if I uh, open up this one here, you can see uh, this one actually has um, some of the restaurant buffet uh, cars. And then I've got a couple of, uh, I think they're open um, mock ones on the side. And so I can just organize it um, as I see fit. Uh, this one here, I think, has the uh, southern uh, mock ones. And then I've got some maroon mock ones. I think all the way down here we've got um, some parcels vans and uh, we got um, some spares uh, mock ones that didn't really go with anything else. Got some uh, beer, chocolate and cream um, mock ones you can see there. And um, it's just organized really, really nicely and I can just uh, pick stuff up and roll. Okay, so here I've got a couple of uh, drawers of uh, Mach 2 coaches. So I've got some uh, Mach 2, Mach 2A uh, corridor coaches in here. And you can see uh, they fit uh, really nicely in there. And I've uh, just used these simple uh, labels I got off Amazon. Uh, and I don't think I can open that one because of the camera mount. And if I open this one here, you can see uh, I've got some, these are uh, Mach 2, Mach 2A, blue and gray uh, open coaches. So I was able to separate out uh, the open coaches with the corridor coaches and then uh, some additional corridor. All right, so uh, this is the uh, next one over. It's uh, got the uh, Intercity uh, 125 Mach 3 coaches in there. You can see uh, they all fit as well. I was able to get Mach 4 coaches in here without any problem. Uh, one thing I did notice, you can see here, these ones don't move as much because they're not, um, they're taking up more space. And here you can see, I've got a set of HST uh, power cars. I haven't quite uh, finished installing these ones yet. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is actually show you um, how I go and put these and catalog them and, and so on. So hopefully you guys will find that interesting. Okay, so this part's pretty straightforward. Um, most of the products have the uh, product code. Uh, here it's uh, R4893B. Tells you it's a Scottrail Mach 2F and then has the running number. And so what I basically do is I just uh, jot these down in, um, in a notebook. So you can see here, I've already done this for my Mach 3A coaches uh, from Oxford Rail. And I've done it for um, Mach 2 E ones from um, Hornby, Mach 2 F ones from Bachman, and so on. And basically, what I do is I take the um, part number, uh, the type of coach it is, and the um, running number, and I store that in the and along with the delivery, and I store that in a um, in a spreadsheet, and then um, I actually export that spreadsheet into some software that I've written, and um, there'll be more on that in a later video. Basically what I do is once I've got it all and I jot it down in the book here, um, I then open them up very carefully and, and check it out. So what I'm gonna do, you don't need to see me write them all down. I'm gonna quickly um, jot these down into the book and then we'll show you how I uh, open them up and just check them to make sure they're okay. All right, so you can see here, um, I've just written out the uh, Scott Rail ones and the DRS ones. I leave a little space here uh, on the side. So we got the product code, the type of coach it is. We got um, uh, brakes that can open. Um, tour a second open and then the uh, running number and then I leave this space here uh, just in case there's a problem um, with a particular coach maybe there's a coupling damaged or a mark or something like that and I'll jot that down so that I know to whether I need to go and send something back or whether it's something I can fix or uh, whether it's something I need to email Hornby and maybe they'll do something about it um, but usually what happens is I end up fixing it myself and um, the other thing is I use these um, Avery and multi-use labels. So I think it's an American brand. Um, the uh, product code looks like it's 6728, and these are one inch by three inch labels. They weren't very expensive. And then you can see here I've written Mach 2F coaches, Scott Rail livery, DRS livery, and I'll stick that on the end of the um, uh, of the um, drawer. So uh, without further ado, let's just. Uh, get this opened up so I think crazy just uh, open up I'm not gonna film all of these right I'm just gonna film one or two just so you can get a, get a 
Oh, it's definitely on the first one. You can kind of get a look at it. Uh, so I check to make sure there's nothing, you know, floating around inside the box. Uh, get the usual extra parts. And like I said, these actually drop uh, nicely into there. And then what I normally do is before I uh, check and you know, open it up, and I'll make sure there's no visible damage uh, from transit or anything like that. Um, I actually don't normally open it up over here by the, by the layout. I'll open it up over on the uh, desk with a kind of a white piece of paper or a cutting board underneath it so I can see any parts that fall off. Um, but just for the purpose of this video, um, I was going to go and just open them over here. And so this one looks okay, so I'm just going to open it up, remove the coach, and uh, try not to uh, hold it too much. I'm just going to take a quick look at it here. Looks pretty okay. And so what we'll do next is just put it into the container like that, and then just proceed uh, through each one. So I'm going to go do the rest of them and then just show you another thing at the end. So these uh, DRX coaches, by the way, are, are really, really nice. Uh, they're the direct rail services. This is the uh, TSO, I think. And you can see there, it's a really nice coach. So we'll run those a little bit later on. Um, but just want to show you, um, that's basically the process, right? So now it's all neatly put away here in this um, in this drawer. And when I want to run these uh, or the other Scarrell ones, uh, I know exactly where they are. I can pick them up, uh, run them over to the layout, and uh, go from there. Um, I also use these. These are uh, kind of desk organizers. And if I've got coaches or logos that um, have a lot of detail, I'll actually... Uh, store them in this and use them to transport them from here um, over to the layout. So if I do lose any parts off of them, um, they'll stay in the container. And I think I got these um, at the Dollar Tree. Uh, so I'll probably find something similar to Pound Shop. They're just a, a desk drawer organizer. Uh, this one is 34.3 centimeters by 9.5 centimeters by five centimeters. You know, see there? So pretty handy. All right, so uh, before I wrap up the video, I'm actually gonna go over to the other side and uh, just give you guys a quick look at one of these um, units in full light and uh, a little bit further back from the from the camera. I have one right at the end is actually uh, rotated at 90 degrees and so I can access it over there. All right, so uh, give me a minute to move the camera over there and you can check it out. Oh, one other thing. Um, when I'm done with the boxes, I actually uh, put them back together. So I take the wrapping and stuff it back in there like that. Um, close up the box and um, I'll actually store the boxes um, under the layout um, so I'll put them in a pile there and uh, take them over and store them all together. All right so with uh, that looking good and tidied away let's go uh, give you guys a closer look at one of these drawers. All right so this is uh, one of the, the units here and it's actually the latest unit that I uh, picked up so like I said I've got seven of them over here and then I have another one that's uh, over underneath the other section of the layout. And they actually have, if I uh, tilt this forward, you'll be able to see the, the drawers don't fall out. Um, they come with these wheels. Uh, I decided uh, not to put the uh, caster wheels on the unit, um, mainly because the layout's in the basement. And uh, we sometimes get mice down here. There's no real way about it. We, we live in the woods. Um, so they find their way in. And so um, having the wheels underneath it might have been useful to like wheel it out and you know be able to put the coaches out in a layout um, but because there's a little bit of play um, back and forth I thought it might damage the locos or the rolling stock that I put in here and the other thing too is that these actually increase the height by about a half inch or so and I thought that putting them on there might give the mice actually somewhere to nest and hide uh, under my nice rolling stock so I figured it was better not to do that and um, you can also see on the top here it, it won't won't go forward um, because I might have to lower this part of it, but the rest of it, um, the baseboard's actually lower so it won't actually fall out. But I wanted to show you that there are actually trays on the top here uh, for you to organize stuff. And I actually use these trays over on the other part of the layout um, where it's a little bit um, higher up. But you can see there, um, works really, really well. And so this um, particular section here is, uh, just for me to, to work on stuff. So for example, if I'm uh, you know, done with something on the layout over here, I might uh, stick it in the um, 
in the drawer here for later use just to keep things tidy over in the sand. Um, but yeah, so I thought you guys might appreciate every now and see the thing in its uh, full size. All right, so one other thing you might notice is uh, the floor here is a little bit different than the floor over here. And the reason for that is um, I actually put down this laminate flooring over the past uh, couple of weeks. And this was spare leftover laminate flooring we had um, from replacing the floor in the kitchen. And so um, I put it down on top of um, the existing kind of pine wood board uh, raised floor. And the reason I did that was I'm always losing parts over here. And um, if you look over on this side, you can see there's kind of a gap between the, between the floorboards. And what can happen is I'd lose little parts down in there and it'd be real pain to either look around for them or, or fish them back out. So uh, putting on the laminate flooring has kind of fixed out, especially over this section and uh, near Chippenham Junction and Bath Gardens is right there. Um, where I kind of lose parts all the time. So hopefully that'll uh, save me some time as well. And uh, also while I was doing that, while I was cleaning the section up, um, I discovered that uh, we had some flooding um, over the summertime. And so uh, there was a little bit of mold uh, that we had missed uh, that was growing through some cardboard boxes that were stored over here. And so uh, it took about a week or two to clean that up and another week or two to sort of clean up down here so their odor was, was gone and it was uh, safe to start filming down here again. So if you were looking for um, some of the videos and wondering why they stopped, uh, that's why I ran into that mold problem again. Uh, but luckily, uh, I think I've cleaned all of it up now and it, it's uh, not gonna be an issue. It was just two or three cardboard boxes, but it was enough of growth on the wall that uh, I better be safe than sorry and, and get it cleaned up. So um, you should see, um, some of the uh, Hornby Centenary videos will we'll start going back up uh, today and uh, we'll, we'll do catch up. We'll, we'll get um, the ones that we've missed up on the channel, probably one or two extra a day until we, we get caught up. And the other thing that's coming up is um, I have some uh, Murphy models and it's a bit of a hint uh, for what I am doing with the original double uh, O rail layout. Um, the original double O rail layout actually um, sits, so you can part of the baseboard right here. Um, actually sits underneath um, the double rail layout and so I added some baseboards to it to kind of clean it up a little bit and uh, it's been used for storage for a good couple of years and uh, now we're gonna clean it up and maybe use it for a slightly different project so if you're into the uh, Irish uh, railways uh, you might appreciate uh, some of the videos that are coming up soon uh, of course we're gonna be putting out some layout update videos too soon so if you uh, like that stay tuned and of course um, we have 3D printing stuff coming up as well, so I got lots of videos and uh, stuff's uh, starting to get kicked out again, so I uh, hope you guys will look forward to it and get a chance to watch the channel. If there's anything you'd like to see, uh, please put it in the comments below, we'll try to accommodate it, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, storage video. Alright, so um, I do actually have some other um, storage things that I've got over on the other section of the layout, and I'll do another video of that in, in a couple of weeks and you can check that out. Okay, so I thought I'd uh, wrap things up by just giving you guys a final look in the other direction so you can see uh, this one's at 90 degrees. It's the one that I just showed you, um, the kind of closer look at it. And then I've got, uh, what's it, one, two, three, four, five, I've got six more that way. Uh, so I've got seven on the side in total, and then we've got another one on the other side of the layout as well. And I might add some more, uh, maybe over under here um, or behind me here uh, if I ever need to do that uh, in the future. Uh, but these are a good product, I really like them, and uh, I think they're made here in the United States. Um, so if you're in the States, uh, you can get them off Amazon pretty easily. Uh, in the UK, uh, they have similar products on Amazon.co.uk, uh, so it's well worth checking out. Alright, so I hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, if you did, put it in the comments below. And if you got any other suggestions with storage, let me know. Um, I do have some other storage solutions I use for my uh, freight rolling stock and locos, and that's over on the other side of the layout, and we'll show you that in an upcoming video. Alright, so that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time.